Thank you very much, Daryl. I'm delighted to be here for this program. It's a program that was, has been two years in the making. Okay, well today the program, as Daryl said, is very timely because we hear debates all the time on the access to health care. And today's speakers will touch on some of the historical aspects of health care in the Japanese community and how racism limited access for both patients and for doctors. We're here today as a direct result of a, me of a meeting that the Little Tokyo Historical Society held in early 2008. The purpose of the meeting was to identify topics that needed to be researched and preserved, and healthcare was high on the list. At the time, Carol Fujita and Aiko Masayama volunteered to lead the project, and they looked into the museum's own Marie Masamoto of the Harasaki National Resource Center for, their, for assistance. They first started looking at midwives and where babies were being delivered, and this led to the early hospitals. They learned how access to health care was compromised during the 1918 flu pandemic, and how about that time community leader Inosuke, Inosuke, Inosuke sorry, uh, established the first Japanese hospital at Turner and Amelia. This hospital was followed by the Japanese hospital located at First and Fickett Streets. And the building is still there. It's currently being used as a community clinic. As they delved into their study, Carol and Aiko found out about the legal struggle involved in building the First and Fickett Hospital. And it was at this point that they heard of Dr. Troy Kaji and the grandson of one of the founding doctors, Issei doctors, of the First and Fickett Hospital. Troy had done a fellowship on the history of Japanese hospitals in California, completing his studies a few months after the last LA hospital, City View, was closed for good. He has now continued to work on this history and his research is now archived in the permanent collection of the museum. Since the hospitals were founded more than 80 years ago, Aiko and Carol began to search for relatives of the early doctors and for people who were old enough to recall health care before World War II. They identified and interviewed five individuals who had first-hand information. So later in the program, we will have a few film clips from some of these interviews. A little, a, a little over a year ago, Discovery Nikkei began collaborating with the Little Tokyo Historical Society, particularly Carol and Aiko. And together they made plans for a public presentation, this presentation, so that these important stories could be more widely disseminated. Today, the Little Tokyo Historical Society and Discovery Nikkei are proud to present this research. We don't have enough time to share all of the information that was collected so additional resources have been prepared. And in your program, there are two handouts. One is a historical timeline of significant dates related to the hospital. And the other highlights resources on Discovery Nikkei website, as well as other sources of information. Discovery Nikkei has both articles and interview clips online, and there are plans to add more from the interviews that were collected, including video excerpts from today's Program. So now we have the honor of hearing from Dr. Troy Kaji, and he has worked on the hospitals of California. Troy grew up in Gardena, where his mother, Frances Tashiro Kaji, regularly ha had her mother, Moto Tashiro, care for him after school. Obachan Tashiro regularly challenged Troy to games of Chinese checkers, checkers under the solemn gaze of his grandfather. Kikuo Tashiro, looking down from his portrait, hanging over the television in the living room. And it, he was a, turned out to be a major influence on Troy's decision to become a doctor. Troy graduated from Gardena High in 1978, received his Bachelor of Science from Yale in 1982, and earned his medical degree from UC Davis in 1986. 444. You got it through on the right time. While at Davis, Troy began his research on Japanese American physicians and hospitals in an ongoing quest 
to understand the legacy of his physician grandfather. Today, Troy lives in Berkeley with his wife, Marguerite, and five daughters, Naomi, Noel, Raina, Hope, and Gemma. He currently works as a family medicine physician at Contra Costa Regional Medical Center in Richmond, California. Troy, we welcome you to the museum.